Uh, first of all, thanks for the invitation to come to your lovely country. Um, I would like to start by uh, learning my audience. How many of you have ridden a bike today for this conference? Oh, that's quite a lot. How many of you would have ridden a bike if there was some safe infrastructure? Ah, oh, so there is a potential for cycling in, in Czech Republic. Okay, I'm from, uh, we'll just start, um, I'm from Denmark. This is uh, Copenhagen, this is uh, the place you all know. We've just heard a lot of it from uh, David, and thanks for an excellent uh, speech. And I'm from the little city of Aarhus, which is... Uh, Almost the same city as Bruno. We have 325,000 inhabitants. It's beautifully located between forest and the sea. Um, the beautiful thing about Aarhus is it's also a city of university, just like uh, Bruno. So we have around 40,000 students uh, in the city, and that's a really, really nice uh, city. A quick picture of myself. I'm a very, very dedicated cyclist. I go to work every day. I travel 24 kilometers on my bike. I love cycling. I work with cycling, so I work with my hobby, and as I say, I never go to work. I just do my hobby. This is another picture of me cycling with my daughter. She's 10 years of age. This is, for me, the dream of a human-scale city, a city where you can take your daughter on your bike and just cruise the city without wearing a bike helmet. This is a picture of the first bicycle path in Denmark, in Aarhus. It was built in the year 1840-94. So, we in Denmark have a tradition of building bicycle infrastructure that weighs more than a hundred years uh, back. And the interesting thing about this picture, you notice two women on bikes. And this was really, really outrageous at this time of, of the year. And actually, a very famous guy from Aarhus. We actually have a statue of this guy in the city. He said, women on bicycles are a disgrace to society. Um, I wouldn't agree, but if we go today, the exact same place, we have bikes everywhere and we have women on bikes everywhere. And actually, in Aarhus, we have 50% of all our cyclists are women. So, we say Aarhus is the most beautiful biking nation in Denmark, Bikeland City. So, okay. Um, this is a funny picture because every time I go to a new place, I Google cycling. I Googled cycling and Bruno. And this is what I came up with. <laughs> um, pretty scary, I think. And the next picture I took was this picture, and I'm going like, okay, have I landed in the wrong place? And, well, it just continued. It just continued. And I guess, uh, I guess you do not have a cycling tradition in Bruno. This is a wild guess from me, okay. But back to Denmark. You know, we have a cycling tradition in Denmark. We uh, bike uh, every day. We bike when it rains. Uh, we bike when it snows, like David showed us. Our kids go to school by bike, more than 50% in overall go by bike to school. Even our newly elected members of parliament go by bike. And this is not just because they were newly elected, they actually do this every day. So it's quite amazing. This is a picture from beautiful Copenhagen in the late 50s. There are bicycles everywhere. But if you take the same spot, turn time 60 years ahead, this is what it looks like today. So, this could as well be Bruno, this could be Prague, this could be any bigger European city uh, in the world or in Europe. So this is really the problem of Denmark. We had a cycling culture, but we're losing the cycling culture. Bicycle traffic has just been going down and down and down for many, many years. So, that's why we still are working with promoting cycling in the, ne the, de the cycling nation of Denmark. And it's not because we have a lack of beautiful bicycle infrastructure. This is a picture from my hometown, some very, very nice uh, cycling infrastructure. And just so you can get an idea, in my city, our municipality, we have 675 kilometers of bicycle path. 
Just so you can get an idea, we have 1,250 kilometers of roads. So we almost have bicycle paths on half of all our roads. And that's quite a lot. In Aarhus, 25% of all trips are made by bike. But if you look at Odense, the third largest city of Denmark, 30% use their bike every day. And if we look at Copenhagen, 45% use their bike every day. And how is it that the second largest city of Denmark only has 25% using their bikes every day? And the reason is actually we have three main obstacles in Aarhus because we are not really a very good cycling city. The biggest problem is that we have hills, just like in Bruno. I experienced this today. I, I rented a bike. It's quite hard to, to go on a bike in Bruno. The thing is, in the inner city, you have to elevate yourself 100 meters to get six kilometers out of the city. And this equals going four kilometers extra in energy if you choose a bicycling route in Odense or in Copenhagen. So a bike trip of six kilometers in uh, Aarhus corresponds 10 kilometers in Copenhagen. So that's the first obstacle. The other thing is, the municipality is very big. We have a lot of cities uh, in the distances of 20, 15, 10 kilometers from the inner city. And you know, getting people to ride a bike all above distances of four or five kilo kilometers, forget it. People will start taking the, the bus, the train, or their car, or their car number two. So the big thing is to get people traveling bigger distances in Aarhus. We have a lot of everyday cyclists, like this uh, girl on top. She gets on her bike the same way as she takes a cup of coffee or puts on her shoes. She just takes her bike and she goes to the university or what she does. The thing that we've seen in Aarhus is an increasing number of these super cyclists, as David uh, talked. And these guys actually go the distance, 20 kilometers every day. They put on their clothes, they go on their bikes, they go fast, they go to work. They dress up, they take a shower, and then they go to work, and the same when they go back. So that's quite amazing. The other thing, the other problem we have in Aarhus is all our bicycle path infrastructure is located together with all the other traffic. So this is a typical picture as a commuter uh, in Aarhus if you come by bike. You're mixed with a lot of traffic, you have congestion, you have traffic safety issues, and you have the pollution problem. So we have reached a level where we have too much bicycle traffic and car traffic mixed. So, in the year 2009, the municipality, the city council, gave us a present, as I say, a present of 20 million euros to see if we could turn the tides of cycling in Aarhus. So, I will just show you a few of these projects, the result of the project, uh, so you can get an idea on how we work with cycling infrastructure in Aarhus. So the first thing I did was starting building super cycle highways, not alongside the traffic roads, but in between, okay? And the idea is you get this type of infrastructure. Instead of riding with all the cars, you get this beautiful infrastructure where you can go with your kids, so you can go fast, you have the lighting, you have this river, and you have the river on the bicycle path. This uh, picture was taken a day after we had a flooding, so that's why. But normally it's dry. So <laughs> you can go perfectly dry to the inner city on these super cycle highways. And the idea is to go under all the traffic roads so you don't have the problems with the accessibility and the traffic safety. And where we cannot go under, we build bridges so you can cross safely uh, for the roads. One of the big problems and what people say uh, to me are some people work in the city of Aarhus but they travel 30, 50, 100 kilometers every day so they need their car. So cycling for them is not uh, a solution. But I say no, of course it's a solution for you. So what I did on our first bicycle superhighway, this is uh, the supercycle highway and the green line is the uh, highway for cars. Right at the point where they cross I built the first park and bike terminal in Denmark, in Aarhus. So the idea is you take your car and instead of being stuck in traffic the last 8-10 kilometers into the city, you park your car here, 
you have your own bike in a bike box, securely locked. You take this bike and you take the super, super highway into the city and back instead of being stuck in traffic. This is quite interesting. In addition to all this, we made some uh, bicycle playing lane for the kids. We have a lot of kindergartens in this area. And the idea is we put a lot of uh, balance bike. Do you know, s do you know these balance bikes? In, in yeah, well, where they can learn the balance before they use the pedals. And in another box, we have helmets and uh, stuff they can play with. And the and I gave the kindergarten teachers some cargo bikes with an electrical motor so she can go with four kids and play and train cycling every day in this uh, park and bike facility in Aarhus. This has been a huge success in Aarhus. So quite a nice, interesting project. Well, when once we get into the inner city, that's where we have the problems. But Because how do we facilitate high-speed cycling and a lot of cyclists in a place where we don't have the required space for cyclists? We cannot build bicycle lanes or dedicated bicycle paths here. It's the, the road is just too narrow. This is a road in Aarhus. We have 10,000 cyclists going in both directions every day. We have cars going in one direction. We cannot cut off cars because they need to get in and deliver goods, and they need to get in to the uh, housing uh, in the area. So, as we do in Denmark, we always look at Germany. Germany are... Uh, so inspiring for us. In Germany and in Holland, they have bicycle streets. And the thing is, you turn priority. Instead of cars having priority, you give cyclists priority. So I tried to implement this in Denmark. So I asked the Ministry of Transport, can I build bicycle streets in Denmark? They said, no. You have to road, you have to ask the ministry, ministry of Justice for this, because it would require a change of the legislation. So I asked the Ministry of Justice, and they said, no. Not before the Ministry of Transport tells us it's a good idea. <laughs> so, I was stuck. I had a lot of people coming in from the uh, other cities, so I just did it. And we just built the first bicycle street in Aarhus without any allowance at all to do this. We built it as a two-way bicycle path, we put in the sign of a bicycle path, and under the sign it says, you can enter by car, actually, that's translated. But according to Danish legislation, you cannot ride a car on a bicycle street or a bicycle path. So this was totally illegal. But the thing is, we did this in 2012, and it's been working ever since. We also did it uh, in another place. Uh, what we did was narrowing the road and widening the uh, pedestrian areas, the uh, pathways. And just so you can see the difference, this is a picture from the exact same space as this one. And what has happened is that suddenly there's place for people sitting outside in the cafes and the restaurants, having dinner, drinking coffee, and people riding through on bicycles without any problems with the cars. The car levels on the bicycle streets have gone down 40%. We have had zero accidents uh, after we did this, and they've been a huge success, and we just implemented 11 bicycle streets this summer in Aarhus. And the good thing is, suddenly, the Ministry of Transport thought it was a good idea to make bicycle streets. So now we have an official bicycle street sign in Denmark, and every, every city in Denmark is now implementing it. So, a great story. So, supercycle highways is not just about building great infrastructure. It's also about teaching cyclists how to cycle. Can anybody tell me what's wrong with these four cyclists here? Anybody? An idea? They're all black? <laughs> no, helmets. <laughs> no helmets! Yeah, exactly. That's what everybody say. I don't care about helmets, really. I really don't care about helmets. The thing is, all these people are seated way too low. And why is that a problem? Well, if you're not seated probably, you won't get the energy from your legs to the pedals, and then the, the hills will seem so much harder for you, and you will just give up. So if you're seated correctly on your bicycle, you will get much more uh, elevation going up. Also, 
it's a problem with the balance if you're not seated right. So if you suddenly have to break or avoid an accident, you have no chance because you're seated way too uh, uh, wrong, actually. So you don't, you're not prepared. So we've done a lot of uh, projects where we go out, we stop cyclists, we say, well, shouldn't we put oil on your chain and pump your tires? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they come in, and the thing is, we get every cyclist for two or three minutes. We, uh, I pump their tires, I talk with them, what do you like about all who's cycling and all this stuff? And then we adjust their bicycle. This takes two or three minutes, and they come flying out of this. So this has been a really, really good measure, and we do this every, every once in a month. Uh, and we've done it the last three or four years. And that is why we have pumps for cyclists in Aarhus, so they can pump their tires and not use the energy in pressing them flat. And this is especially for the women. The women do not have the, the power to pump a, a bicycle track as they should be. And this is a funny picture of a um, exchange student <laughs> who had a problem on, uh, with the saddle. He said, something is wrong. So <laughs> this was a quick fix for him, actually. <laughs> Uh, we've done a lot of campaigns. We say in Aarhus, we only focus on that there are so many good reasons to bicycle. I know all the skeptics say there are so many reasons not to use your bicycle, but we don't, we don't look at that. We only think positive in Aarhus, always positive. Everything I've done in Aarhus, I've put on uh, the municipality logo, and I write Aarhus Cycling City, because I knew my funding would uh, vanish at some point. So the idea is to have a lot of monuments telling that Aarhus is a cycling city, because if I don't have any money, people will start saying, why don't you build a good and proper bicycle lane? You, s you say yourself are a bicycling city. So this is uh, a very good way of uh, securing uh, investments for the bicycle traffic if you don't have uh, funding. So, we've done a lot of campaigns with these uh, pedal bikes. We have a bike mascot. This is our alderman. She's uh, very proud of the project. This is actually my son when he was uh, two and a half years old. Uh, and the thing is, the good thing uh, in doing campaigns for kids is you communicate to kids, to their parents. The kids want to ride their bike. The parents need to go by bike to the kindergarten with the kids, okay? So you have a double effect of your campaigns. We do the bike to work campaigns, of course. A lot of people and companies told us, yeah, great idea, Pablo, but our employees, when they come to work, they don't have the uh, possibility to take a shower. I said, no problem. So I provided a mobile shower for them so people could start taking a shower at work. Clever. I've introduced a special chip you put in your bicycle. It communicates with the intersection. So when you come as a super, uh, super commuter, the intersection knows that you come and it gives you priority. It's clever. We've introduced the bicycle library. It's a big container full of special bikes, lightweight bikes, cargo bikes, and the idea is, as a citizen in Aarhus, you can just come to the bicycle library and you can borrow a bike for a week or two weeks and try if this is the right solution for you going these long distances instead of taking the car, because this can be very expensive to buy a cargo bike, for example. So we have had a big success with this project and we go, we have it fixed in the city, but we also go to the bigger areas where we have uh, people working, and we just put the bicycle li library for three weeks, and people can come and borrow the bikes. It's been a great success. And finally, of course, we've done the cleaning of the bicycle paths, as David said. It's very important because people normally say, well, people don't ride their bikes when it's snowing, but actually, if you clean the bicycle paths, they will bike. Uh, and this, this has been a problem in general in Denmark. So, if we look at the results of this uh, project, it's been running for six years uh, in total. And the black line is actually the development in bicycle traffic in Denmark in general. You will see it's just been going not either up or down. In, 10, 000, in 2010, it went way down because we had an extremely hard winter. We had almost six months of snow. And if you look at the figures for Aarhus, bicycle traffic only went down that year 3%, because we invested a lot of money in cleaning the bicycle paths. But the good thing is, 
bicycle traffic in Aarhus has just been increasing and increasing and increasing ever since we introduced the project in 2009. The citizens love the project. Um, these, these are two uh, newlyweds from the, uh, on one of our com campaign bikes. Our alderman is secretly in love with our bike mascot. This gives her a lot of publicity. She loves this project. And this is the mayor of Aarhus with the big chain. And uh, the guy on the side is the crown prince of Denmark. And uh, this is from a visit he made to Aarhus. And as a gift, he was given a bicycle. And in the bottom it says, a gift from the cycling city of Aarhus. So for me, this is uh, a proof that I have succeeded with branding the city as a cycling city. And the crown prince actually rides a bike. This is a paparazzi photo of him in Copenhagen riding with his two bikes, uh, two kids in, in his cargo bike. So it all makes sense. But one thing is investing in bicycle traffic. That's easy. But the real effect you will only reach by putting restrictions on the car traffic. And that's one of the things we've been working with in Aarhus. It's almost impossible to find a parking place in the city of Aarhus. We have removed so many parking spaces. Uh, and the thing is, cars and people get really creative when they run out of parking places. So everywhere that they park their cars illegally, I put bicycle stands. So they cannot park their cars. Another thing we do in general is we densify the city. We build up. People living closer together do not need a car on a day-to-day -day basis. Right now, we're building the next supercycle highway. We're going to introduce it together with the light rail that will open actually uh, this year also. Um, the reason why we're running together with the light rail is that we can go on top of the bridges with the light rail and in that way even out the uh, steepnesses of the, uh, the heights. And we're going to start at the uh, railway station where we have bikes everywhere. We're going to build a bicycle parking house for 2,500 uh, bicycles. We're going to introduce the Japanese full automatic bike parking system. And we are actually well ahead of building this supercycle highway. We call it the Velostrada of Aarhus. It's beautiful. This is seen from the top. Part of it is going to be covered. It's not only to give you uh, protection from the rain, it's also to put solar panels on the uh, thing to give energy for lighting on the bicycle path. And to attract other users of the Velostrada, we're building 300 meters of strawberry fields so you can go every summer and have strawberry fields on the Velostrada of Aarhus. So, I invite you to come to Aarhus and have strawberries if you have time sometime. Thank you.